Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening. My name is Dave McBride, and for my third capstone, I chose to investigate how anomaly detection can be implemented in cybersecurity. Over the tenure of my professional career thus far, I have had four different roles. Of those four jobs, there has been only one common denominator, cybersecurity. With the cybersecurity industry estimated to grow approximately 300% in the next nine to 10 years, my prior experience and my passion for the field, I figured it'd be the best decision to continue down this path. So what is anomaly detection? Anomaly detection can be defined as the ability or process of finding outliers within a given data set. Anomalies are data points or values that do not fit the historical patterns or tendencies. So the concept of training a machine to predict instances that do not frequently occur is a bit more tricky than one would initially think. Some practical applications outside of cybersecurity or network intrusion would be system health monitoring, healthcare devices, fraud detection, and data cleaning. There are a few standard models for anomaly detection in the industry today, ranging from cluster and histogram-based detectors to isolation force and autoencoders. I chose to use an isolation force for my model, which is an unsupervised learning model. <clears throat> an isolation force uses a structure very similar to the random forest, but conceptually very different. Like a random forest, it is comprised of a designated amount of decision trees that split the data while looking for points to become isolated. When a value is isolated, it is given a score dependent upon the depth to which it was isolated. It is then compared against the score from all the other trees in the forest to find a mean that determines the final score. One thing to note, isolation forests have a huge problem dealing with high dimensionality. The isolation forest makes all splits and determinations on random values and random features. The max number of features it can choose from is dictated within the hyperparameters, and so is the contamination. Contamination is the parameter that indicates the percentage of data points that will be classified as anomalies. As you can see from the graphic on the right, the parent node has a range of data points and chooses a random value within that range to split the data further and further down the tree. Because anomalies are going to be the data points furthest from the median or mean of this range, they're going to inherently be isolated higher up on the tree. The orange line is representing the randomly chosen value for that split. Once a node has only one data point, the decision tree classifies that point as an anomaly and uses the data points depth on all the other trees within the forest to determine a respective anomaly score. As you can see in the left and right nodes, the red data points are isolated away from the other data points by these random splits. With all this in mind, let's get to our data and use an isolation force to detect the anomalies. I use two data sets for understanding of isolation forest, training of my model, and finally the testing of a large data set with the final version of my model. The first data set is a Canadian Superstore's profit data. This data set has roughly 10,000 data points across 21 different features. The second data set I used is comprised of approximately 500,000 different network recordings and has 41 features. In understanding my data, I first explored a few features to see if there were any glaring indications of anomalies across these two distributions. As you can see from the histograms on the left, you can conclude that there are values that lie far from the bulk of the data. Let's see if our first ISO forest model can detect these points. We are going to set our contamination to 1%, which will tell our model to look for all data points that do not fall in the 99th percentile of commonality. The isolation forest chose two random features and determine the 1% of the data points that fall outside the range of common data points. As you can see from the top graphic here, the anomalies or outliers are distributed in red and begin to formulate to the left and right away from the mean. The bottom graphic on the left <clears throat> is a scatter plot that indicates the anomalies in red as they get further and further from the bulk of the data. So our first model worked, but how do we tune an unsupervised model without any real world feedback? As previously mentioned, the isolation forest does not do well with high dimensionality. So I used a random forest to compute SHAT values, which are values that indicate the level of impact for each feature within the data set. With this information, I can now tell my model which features it should be selecting from to give a more efficient and insightful classification of anomalies. After I determined which feature had the most influence in determining outliers, I set that as a hyperparameter for my model and ran my final data set through it. I set the contamination to 0.01 or 1%, and the graph to the right indicates the model's classification of inliers and outliers. The red line is the, in the graph shows the model's learned decision function as it computes through the trees within the forest. The gradient blue coloring indicates the higher the anomaly score for those outliers as the shade of blue gets darker. So concluding, we found almost 5,000 anomalies for these network recordings in this data set. It worked.
Given more time with this data, I would like to get this pipeline into the cloud, present a feedback on a dashboard, build some sort of some systematic approach for the data review process, and if, if applicable, layer my model with another model to get even more of an accurate detection of anomalies. Again, we can use this type of machine learning to predict anomalies in network intrusion, fraud prevention, and system health monitoring frameworks. For this project, this is the tech that I used. Thank you for listening to my presentation and do you have any questions?